to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Sunday evening service of our Daniel series. We are happy that you've chosen to be with us this evening. Last week, we looked at Daniel chapter 6, and Pastor Palmer brought us through it with many lessons in store. And so this evening is no exception as we continue to look at Daniel chapter 7. If you have not done so as yet, I invite you to like and share the page and let others know that our Sunday evening series has begun. Wherever it is that you're joining us from at this time, I invite you to bow your heads with me and let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to the start of another week. We thank you, Father, for affording us the opportunity to come out and worship you this evening. In a special way, we ask that you may cleanse us, take away from our lives the things that may hinder us hearing your word this evening. We pray, Father, that you may continue to be with us as we go through this service. May we get the lessons that you have in store for us. Be with the preacher and everyone else who will be participating. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Indeed, it is a wonderful thing to come to the Lord and to worship him. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. As we continue to praise the Lord this evening, I invite you to join us, join with Sister Serana and Brother Shaquille, along with the musician, as we lift the name of God in singing and praise. Good evening, everyone. Join us as we sing our first hymn, 245, More About Jesus I Would Know. 245. More about Jesus I would know, more of his grace to walk the shore, more of his saving fullness, more of his love who died for me. Jesus, let me learn more of his holy will desire. Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his 
It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. 524. 524. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me near the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin. Self to cease, just from Jesus, simply taken life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, wilt be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus. the victory that overcomes the world. Hymn 608. 608. Encamped along the hills of light, he grew 
Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall fill the glowing skies against the foe it fails below let all the strength be heard faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world faith is the victory faith is the victory Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. 618. That will be our final hymn for this evening. 618. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every fall is vanquished. Strive will not. 
Amen. Amen. That was indeed some wonderful singing. I am sure that the family join in as we praise the Lord together. God is indeed praised this evening. It says, the psalmist continued to say, magnify the Lord with me. Come, let us exalt his name together. It is now time for us to lay our petitions before God. We are admonished in scripture to pray continually, to pray without ceasing. We're also encouraged to come boldly before the throne of grace that we may be able to lay our petitions before God. And so this evening, we invite Pastor Eustace George to come and intercede on our behalf. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Father Lord, we say thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for all that you have done for us. We consider how mighty how wonderful, how loving you are. And we can say, surely, Lord, you have been our help in ages past. You have been our loving Savior, loving Father. And even as we look at the future, we know that you are hope to come. And so, Lord, even tonight as we call on your name, we ask you in a special way to forgive us where we have fall short. We ask you, the Lord, if there's anything that is not like you that resides in us, to remove it. Wash us clean, Lord. Make us more like you. Father, tonight as we pray, we intercede for every listener online tonight, every hearer of your word, every church folk, every community member, Father, Lord, we bring before you various petitions, various needs. We bring at your throne of grace, Lord, health circumstances, health issues, financial distress. We bring before you, Lord, relationships that have been raptured. For we know that you are still in the balm in Gilead to heal sick folks. We know that you are still the great provider to provide finances and blessings for those in need. We know, Lord, that you are still able to mend and reconcile relationships. And so, God, all these petitions we bring before you today. Father God, many folks are in attendance tonight, though virtually, coming, listening, with all sorts of challenges. But we know, Lord, that you are still able, more than able, to do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. So if and all, dear Father, we intercede on behalf of every person looking on tonight. We pray, oh God, that you'll visit every heart, visit every home, bless, keep, direct, and lead your people. Oh God, tonight we pray in a special way for your man servant. May your word that comes through him be a blessing to us all. Continue to guide us, continue to protect us. Be with us even now, we pray in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is indeed pleased when we lay our requests before him. It means that we understand that he is a prayer answering God. He's a God of the impossible and he can indeed do all things. Our scripture reading for this evening is taken from the book of Daniel. Like I said, we're looking this evening at Daniel chapter 7. So the book of Daniel chapter 7, reading from verses 1 to 6. And I invite you to get your Bibles out, open with me, and let us read together. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. And it reads, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions, and his head upon his bed. 
Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made a stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon his back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. May the Lord bless the readers of his word. As we continue to praise God together, Sister Marlene Charles will come and bless our hearts with an item of special music. So at this time, we make way for Sister Charles as she lifts up the name of God in singing. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry will be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall rise they shall This is fulfilling, and the signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere, I can almost hear the Father, as he said, son, go get my children. The dead in Christ shall rise, they shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain, that remain, will be quickly changed. And 
the midnight cry when Jesus comes again and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight It's a wonderful gift to have to be able to open our mouths and have praise, sweet sounding melody, sweet sounding music go up to God. We thank Sister Marlene very much for using her talents, her gifts to glorify God this evening. It is now time for us to hear from the man of God. The man appointed for this hour is none other than Pastor Edward Guillaume. He is a spirit filled speaker and a true disciple of Christ. We may have picked up from the scripture reading that it may be a bit intricate and there's a lot of things that we ought to decipher and learn this evening. And so I invite you again, if you have not done so as yet, let someone know that we're on. Like and share the page. I am sure that as much as you would like to hear what Daniel chapter 7 means, someone else would like to hear as well. So let them know that we're on. Let us continue to learn through the book of Daniel, through this Daniel series. So again, like and share the page as we make room for Pastor Guillaume, who is going to come and break the word at this time. Good evening to all our listeners and viewers. Welcome to another Sunday night service as we continue to give God praise, worship him, and to learn more about him as we continue on this Daniel series. This evening I'm going to deal with Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Very interesting uh, chapter. Uh, so I want you to tune in, listen up, and you can get your Bibles as you follow as we go along. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear God and Father, we give you thanks and praise for your goodness and your love, even throughout the day. Lord, even as we come on this platform to continue to worship and to praise you, we ask that you will speak to our hearts. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, grant us the understanding and the wisdom that we need. And Father, may we be able to apply it to our lives. Bless your words. Hide me behind the cross. Lord, may you put the words in my mouth and the meditation in my heart. May it be acceptable to you and be a blessing to those for listeners and viewers, is our prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to begin with the base text from Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. And it says, And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. And this is from Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. Now, in order for us to understand Daniel chapter 7, we must take a sneak peek at its parallel with Daniel chapter 2. There's, there's a correlation here. So in Daniel chapter 2, you will notice here that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that he could not recall, but he was troubled. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel had a dream that he recalled and was also troubled. Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about an image whose head was gold, breast and arms, silver, a belly and tie of brass, legs of iron, and feet and toes of iron mixed with clay, representing the political kingdoms of the then world. 
Then in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel had a dream of four beasts that parallel the political kingdoms of Nebuchadnezzar's image dream. In Daniel chapter 2, it deals largely with political matters and was given for the instruction of Nebuchadnezzar to secure his cooperation in the divine plan of salvation. But when we go over to Daniel chapter 7, we notice here that Daniel chapter 7 expands, it expands what was revealed in Daniel chapter 2. And so the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7 and onwards are given for us to understand and cooperate with God in the divine plan of salvation. So Daniel was given a dream by the Lord of a pictorial view of the future of the world. Daniel saw in his dream the sea became agitated in chaos and tumult as four beasts came up out of it. You know, as those beasts came out, out of the sea, they were different one from another. May I suggest here that the sea is symbolic of the nations of the world. It represents people. And I'm not speaking my own words here, but I want to use a, bab a biblical reference to this. And in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 and verse 15, the Bible says, listen carefully, you can read it on the screen as well. It says, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither, I will show Unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth, no, listen to this, that sitteth upon many waters. So verse 15 seeks to um, explain more about this, about this text in verse 1. It says, in verse 15, the Bible says, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and towns. So I want us for a moment to take a look at the description of the first three beasts. And notice here in Daniel chapter 7, verse 4 to 6. Daniel chapter 7, verse 4 to 6. You will see here that it speaks about a lion with eagle's wings that came out of the sea. And it is symbolic. It is symbolic of the Babylonian superpower. And found, it was found, that lion with eagle's wings, they, they were often found in many objects of art in Babylon. And so you will notice here that the Bible says that the wings of that lion were plucked out. The lion, which symbolizes that the lion was no longer able to fly Upon its prey like an eagle. Babylon, true, uh, though ruled by Nebuchadnezzar's successors, lost its political influence and power. You will remember that for seven years, he lost not only his power, but he lost his reason. Because he became like an animal outside even of his own domain. And so... In uh, the Bible, you realize that Babylon lost its lion heart and uh, a man's heart was given to it, which means that Babylon lost its lion-like qualities. You know, a man's heart represents Babylon's declining power. It represents timidity and cowardice. May I suggest to you that no man, none of us, will want to do anything to do anything with a ferocious lion. I'm suggesting that none of us will want to do anything with a ferocious lion. And the fact that that lion has lost his, his, his uh, was given a man's heart, it represents Babylon's declining power, timidity, and cowardice. You will notice here in verse 5 that it speaks about a, 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 another beast that came up and it looked like a bear representing the Medo Persian superpower um, succeeding uh, Babylon. 
you will notice that the Persians dominated the relationship and power over the Medes. You will notice that as that, that lion like that, that bear uh, like beast that come from the sea, you will notice here that the bear was raised on one side. It is agreed that the three ribs represents Middle Persia's three conquests, great military conquests of Babylon, Egypt, and Lydia. The third beast that came up was like a leopard representing Greece. You will notice that in verse 6. The leopard is a fierce, carnivorous animal noted for its swiftness and agility of its movements. You will see that in Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 8. And so in Daniel chapter 8 and verse 21, it records that Medo-Persia was conquered by Greece. History says that Alexander the Great quickly conquered the civilized world by the age of 28. Matter of fact, Adam, Adam Clark in his commentary he states that nothing in the history of the world was equal to the conquest of Alexander who ran through all the countries of Illyricum and the Adriatic Sea to the Indian Ocean and the River Ganges and in 12 years subdued part of Europe and all Asia. And so after his death, after his death, his empire was divided into four parts of four heads. In Daniel chapter 8 and verse 21, you will notice that there. Specifically, the four heads were Cassandra, Lysimachus, Cilicius, and Ptolemy, who inherited Alexander's domain after his death. Then Daniel saw the fourth beast. He saw the fourth beast come out of the water while he was able to describe the first three beasts, one looked like a lion, the other one looked like a bear, and the other one looked like a leopard. May I suggest to you this evening that that fourth beast, that fourth beast, you know, he couldn't put a, a description to that beast because the fourth beast is uniquely indescribable and uniquely horrific in its power and conquest. There is no creature that Daniel, in no creature in the natural world that Daniel could have used to compare this beast. And so as he observed this beast, he recognized that it had huge iron teeth. May I say to you that iron is significant in identifying this beast. And again, in order for us to understand this, it means that we must go back to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 40, which says, And the fourth kingdom, speaking about the fourth beast, and the fourth kingdom, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all of these shall it break in pieces and bruise. So as Daniel observed this beast, he realized that it was really different to the first three. Really different. It had ten horns. In the ancient world, horns expressed the power and fearsomeness of an animal. And the fourth beast, this fourth beast, was so strong that it had ten horns. Notice here in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7, you will see here that it represents, it represents the divided state of the Roman Empire after its fall. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 24, the Bible says, And the ten horns out of, his, of, out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And notice here, it says, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse or different from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. 
So if, so hear me now. If the four beasts of Daniel 7 represents kingdom, represent kingdom, according to verse 17, then there must be a parallel, there must be a parallel to the four superpowers of Daniel chapter 2 that speaks about that image that Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about. So as we move to Daniel chapter 7, verse 19 and verse 20, you will notice here that Daniel now desires to know the truth of the fourth beast, the ten horns and the little horn that came up in the midst of the ten horns and subdued three horns. As we move further down, Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 and verse 24. I wish I had time to read, but you can read it for yourself. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 and verse 24, you realize here yeah, that Daniel now gives the true meaning of the characteristics of the fourth beast and the ten horns and the little horn. And so as you notice in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, Daniel observes and describes the pompous behavior of the little horn's power. You will notice here that the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, the Bible says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hands until a time, times, and the dividing of times. Now, one thing I want you to remember. Remember, remember that the little horn rose after. The little horn rose after the breakup of the Roman Empire in, into the ten kingdoms. And you can refer back to verse 8 and verse 20 of Daniel chapter 7. But history, history proves that in AD 476, the Roman emperor, Romulus Augustulus, fell from power after a brief reign of just one year. So the Roman empire subsequently was divided into ten smaller kingdoms that became Western Europe. May I suggest to you, we don't need to look for the little horn power to rise in North or South America. We don't need to look for the little horn power to rise in Africa or Australia or even in the West Indies. Daniel, he pinpoints its location as coming from within the divided Roman Empire that is somewhere within the nations of Italy, the nations of the nations of Italy and Germany and England and France and Spain and Portugal and Switzerland, somewhere in Europe. And so it's rising. It's with the aim to dominate the world. But the question is this evening, how can we be certain? How can we be certain that that little horn's power refers to Rome. How can we be certain that this little horn's power refers to Rome? And I want to refer you to Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, 5, and 6. You see, we cannot study the book of Daniel and not study, not look at the book of Revelation. Neither can we look at the book of Revelation and not look at the book of Daniel because they are related in many ways. And here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and verse 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, and I stood, and I stood. This time it's John. John is saying here, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. We just read this in Daniel. Having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horn ten crowns. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. Uh, verse, the Bible says, and there was given 
unto him. That's verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And then the last verse says, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. You know, the angel explained to Daniel that this kingdom, so we are going back to Daniel. The angel explains to Daniel that this kingdom will perform three outstanding and unlawful actions. Unlawful actions. Three outstanding. Outstanding and unlawful actions. Number one. The Bible says that he will speak pompous words. Words that are arrogant and, or words that are haughty. Or blasphemous words against God. The second action is that he will persecute the saints of the Most High. And then he will change, seek to change times and laws. And so the angel in verse 25 of Daniel chapter 7 gives the time frame for the performance of these activities. Just as we read in Revelation by the little horn. It says a time, times and half a times. You know, according to the prophetic calendar, it is three and a half years or according to the Yede principle as outlined in Numbers chapter 14 and verse 34 and Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 6. It is 1260 years or 1260 years or as Revelation says, it's 42 months. So God is not only, God is the only. Let me make this point here. And as we have just read, that while that little horn may seek to do those outstanding and unlawful actions against the Most High, I submit this evening that God is the only creator of time. And he is the only one that has the power to change time. We don't have that power. No man in this world has the power to change God's time or change his laws. And so the little horn arrogantly challenges the authority of God by attempting to change times and laws. You know, the Sabbath. The Sabbath is one of the commandments that speaks to time and speaks to God as creator of time. So after he would have created the, the world in six days, this earth, after he would have created plants and animals, after, after he would have created the trees and all of those things, and God would have created in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 3, the Bible says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has made. This text is telling me that God is the only creator of this world, the only creator of human time. God is the only creator of time. He is the only one that can establish and maintain his laws. So in verse 3, the Bible says, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2, and verse 3, the Bible says, and God blessed the seventh day. Notice that, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And so if God created this world, he's the only one that can change times and laws. 
We don't have that authority to do so. No man on this earth has the authority to change times or God's laws. And so the Sabbath, the Sabbath as we read in this text was God's crowning act of creation. And as a result of this, this crowns God, God alone as the ultimate creator. Sunday worship is not commanded by the Bible. Instead, it was formally instituted by the authority of the Roman church. History shows that the Roman emperor Constantine the first on March 7th, AD 321, issued the first civil Sunday law compare, compelling all in the Roman Empire except farmers to rest on Sunday in commemoration of the day of the sun. Or, as history says, the venerable day of the sun. You see, the Sabbath was never confused during the first four centuries as the day established by God as worship. But today, today, not only has the devil confused the minds of people, but his deliberate attempt to change times and laws through the little horn's power has created a religious confusion that we now experience in our world. So the devil always counteracts or counterfeits what is truth with falsehood. The devil always seeks to create confusion and chaos in the minds of people. May I submit to you this evening that the truth of God is clear. Somebody say amen. The truth of God is precise. The, pre the truth of God is concise. The truth of God is solid. And the truth of God is sure. God's instructions are always specific and he's always particular about what he commands. His authority may be challenged but can never be overtaken. His truth may be twisted but his truth shall stand forever. He cannot be overthrown. God cannot be overthrown. God cannot be assassinated. No terrorist attack can destroy our ever-living and everlasting God. Somebody say amen. You know, through the world, matter of fact, though the world may wander after the beast, God has no rival. Huh. Somebody didn't hear this. Though the world may wander after the beast, God has no rival. No rival. No human being. No authority on this earth. Can rival God. So the Bible says. In Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 to 8. Here's what the Bible says. This is what the Lord says. Israel's king and redeemer. The Lord almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me. There is no other God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out. Before me, that's the, inter the, new inter the new international version. It says, let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses, the Bible says. Is there any God besides me? No, no, there is no other rock. I know not one. You know, the little horn will seek to persecute the saints of God. And as we look at verse 25, we'll see that. But I just want to back up a little to verse 21. The Bible says, I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Now, evidence show that during the time of pagan Rome, the pagan Rome Empire, that's the fourth beast, they persecuted the Christians. History will repeat itself. And that's why Jesus himself, he warns 
In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9, the New International Version puts it this way. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9, Jesus himself, he warns us, he says, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. But this evening, even though it may turn out to be that, there is hope. Somebody say amen. There is hope. The Bible has given us hope that even though you might be persecuted, even though you might be killed for Jesus, even though you might be tortured or you might be crucified upside down for Jesus, there is hope. So the Bible says here, I love this text. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, Jesus himself said, even though he warns us before, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Happy are they. For theirs is the kingdom of God. There is hope. Then verse 11 says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. There is hope in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. History will repeat itself. But here Jesus has given us hope in the word of God today. And if as we look at Daniel chapter 7, it also gives us hope. It gives us hope in Daniel chapter 7. I want to share that hope with you that though you might be persecuted, whatever you may go through for Jesus Christ, there is hope even in Daniel chapter 7. Hold on to Jesus. So the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 to 14. I want to read it. It's on the screen. It says, I beheld. Then because of the voice of the great words which the horn speak, the blasphemous and pompous and arrogant words that the little horn speak, says Daniel is saying here in the vision that he had, he says, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame as, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Verse 13 says, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of glory. Somebody say praise the Lord. It would never last forever. So as Daniel Say he saw in the night vision and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. And they brought him near before him. But here's what verse 14 says. Verse 14 says, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and language should serve him. That's what God desires of us. Today, in order for us to experience this, we must faithfully serve him even under persecution. So he says his kingdom. God will set up his kingdom. And his dominion, the Bible says, is an everlasting dominion which shall never pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall never be destroyed. But verse 26 says, But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints. What you hope here? Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. As I close this message this evening, I want to encourage you that despite what a little horn's power may do to us, we need to ensure that we continue to remain faithful to God, continue to serve him in spirit and in truth. 
always remember that we need to keep our allegiance to God and not man. Because the day will come when we have to make that conscious choice. We may not be able, we may, we may say, well, yes, I am making it now. But when the rubber really hits the road, that's when we have to make a conscious choice. That's when we have to pledge our allegiance and be loyal to God and not to man. Regardless of persecution. Regardless of torture. Regardless of what that little horn's power will do to us. We have to ensure that we remain faithful to God. And tonight if you are listening and you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ. You are out there and you have heard this message tonight and you are still living for man you are still seeking to please man you are still worshiping on sunday because you are following the tradition of man tonight the bible is saying to you come out of her my people that you may not be partakers of her plagues god want to save you tonight come to jesus tonight don't remain in sin and falsehood and deception and error but come to Jesus. He's calling you, come to Jesus. And those of us who have already accepted him, regardless of what a little horn may do to us, let us ensure that we stick with Jesus, that we stay on his side. Because one of these days, he will reward us greatly. As the Bible says here, he will reward us. The Bible says, shall be the kingdom, shall be given to the people of the saints. One of these days we will inherit this new heaven and this new earth that will be created for us. One of these days there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more dying, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more death. The only way that we can have those experiences is when we remain faithful to God now. So that when he comes a second time, we will go home to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him. This is my prayer this evening. All heads bow, all eyes closed as we pray. Dear Father and God, we thank you for the message in Daniel chapter 7 that speaks to us. That gives us hope. Even when the little horn's power seemed to be merging as a superpower of this world with so much influence and the world seems to be following after the image, the beast. Oh God, we pray that those of us who have already made that commitment and come out of falsehood and deception will remain faithful to you. And those, Lord, who have not yet done so, that they will make that conscious decision to obey you, to serve you until you come. So that when you come, they can experience what it is for the kingdom to be given unto the saints, given to the people of the saints of the Most High, where we will continue to serve him. If we do not serve him now, we will not serve him when he comes. So now is the time for us to serve him, to put into practice what we are learning every Sunday night from Daniel, put into practice so that when you come the second time, we'll be able to continue to serve you, to serve you as our Lord, as our God. We thank you and we bless your name. We give you all praise and honor and glory is our prayer to Jesus Christ our Lord. Everybody say amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Guillaume, for sharing with us this evening, so ably sharing with us what God has placed on your heart. Indeed, we have learned a lot. We are better able to understand what Daniel chapter 7 says, and we thank you very much for sharing. I'm sure that those of you still with us, you did not regret being here or inviting someone to join as well. So I encourage you to come on out again next week, next Sunday, as we continue with our Daniel series. Again, I invite you to join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath mornings at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Our Zoom ID, 874-9040-9613. The passcode, 013-8003. 
Using the same ID and passcode, you can join our prayer intercessors between 12 noon and 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Come on out, join the prayer intercessors, and let us lift our petitions before God. Remember, as I said earlier, we are encouraged to pray without ceasing. And indeed, where there is much prayer, there is much power, which is much needed in order for us to overcome the things of life presently. On Tuesdays, we invite you to join our pastors for the Pastor's Corner, starting at 11.30 a.m. And again, if you miss it at that time, we have a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. So on Tuesdays, Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and again at 8 p.m. And as usual, we have our Youth Live Unplugged program every Friday evening at 7 p.m. So remember, young people and older ones alike, to join us for Youth Live Unplugged. And of course, as you well know, on Sabbath mornings, we continue with our Sabbath service at 9 a.m., Sabbath service at 9 a.m., followed by our AY service at 4 p.m. on Sabbath afternoons. So there's a host of services lined up for you, and you're encouraged to participate and be a part of it all. Additionally, remember, next Sunday at 7 p.m., as I said before, we're back here as we continue, continue journeying through the book of Daniel for our Daniel series as we look at Daniel chapter 8. Again, I thank you very much for joining us this evening. I encourage you to join in on the programs throughout the week. I say thank you. May God bless you richly. And as we close, I invite you to bow your heads with me. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity that we had to be here tonight. We thank you for the lessons that we learned. We pray, Lord, that we may apply it to our lives and share with others. Be with us as we go through the rest of the evening, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I say good night, and God richly bless you. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you Yeah.